Hello everyone, this is Coach Jordan again with another tutorial. Actually, this is an addition to the tutorial that I did a, a few days ago uh, with regards to how to create a master program in LEGO Spike Prime. And in that tutorial, I started to show you how to use broadcasting. And when I was writing that tutorial, I noticed in the events blocks, uh, when I was looking at the when I receive uh, handler, that there's right above it a when boolean handler. And I was like, wait, I wonder if I could use that too. I wonder what that actually does. I hadn't gotten a chance to play with it before. So this is a follow-up to that uh, tutorial where we're going to try to translate this instead of using when I receive, which is what we're using here, uh, listening to a broadcast. Uh, if you remember, we were broadcasting out the current program name, and then when it was called, we were running that particular my block. I want to see what happens if we do instead uh, a when listener for each of these instead of uh, when I receive. All right. Uh, so I just want to show you what's possible there. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to take away elevator, oh, safety factor, steel swing, and design build bridge. Uh, you remember they're calling those. And I'm actually going to delete these when I receives. And instead I'm going to take my when, and I need to say when something is true, right? Um, and if you recall here, we're broadcasting this value. What if I just um, listen for this change to this value and get rid of my broadcast. If I disconnect this, so it's not going to be part of this block, it won't do anything on its own. Um, instead, I want to listen to whether or not current program name is equal to one of these things. Right? So how do I do that? I could use an operator. Um, so I'm going to just listen to an equal. Is it equal to the one that I'm listening to? So I put this in here and I can say when current program name is equal to, and then the same thing I did here, item uh, one of program list of two of program list, etc. So actually I'm just gonna copy and paste this. So I don't, and instead of a program num, because I, I don't know what program num he is here, that was in the context of my buy block. I'm gonna listen to one, then I'm gonna listen to two, then I'm gonna listen to two. So this would be elevator, right? So when current program is one, uh, when that variable matches this one. So what am I doing here? I'm listening to the actual variable instead of listening for a broadcast. And that's really powerful if you think about it. It means that I can listen to any of my variables for a state change. Uh, one of the things that um, I was able to look up while I was trying to figure this out was that in the documentation it specifically says that this will only happen one time. It only happen, I shouldn't say one time, it only happen in a certain condition and that is when it becomes uh, true or false or whatever you're listening for. So when this condition becomes true, it'll fire anything that's in this when block. So when current program name is equal to uh, whatever I want it to be equal to, if that's true, it'll run once. But it won't keep running it if it continues to be true. So if current program name is changed to elevator, it'll run it once when that happens, and then it won't do anything else. And if I change it to safety factor, it won't fire then either. But then if I change it back to elevator, it'll fire again. All right? So let's just copy and paste a couple of these real quick. And we'll throw elevator here, we'll throw safety factor here, we'll throw steel swing there, we'll send design build bridge there. And I'll just go two, three, four. Uh, I'm not gonna go over that, what we're doing here uh, at the moment. Um, if you watch the first tutorial, we talk about the fact that we're using a list and we're looking at that place in the list. So elevator, safety factor, steel swing, steel swing and design build bridge are all in our list. And so we're just comparing the value. So let's just see if that works. Uh, remember, I took out the broadcast. So I'm not broadcasting anymore. All I'm doing is listening for the change in this value. All right, let's hit play. And we're going to switch over to the camera. And then you can see, okay, we're on one, we're on two, we're on three, and we're on four. So it's doing exactly the same behavior we had before. Even though we're not doing a broadcast, we're only listening to variables. So that's a really interesting new way to uh, do this. So what's the difference and when should you use one or the other? Um, I don't know that I figured that all out completely yet, um, but let's look at some examples. So I've got a new program over here that I was tinkering with and called it Listen to Variable. Let me switch back my camera so you can see too. All right, you should be able to see now. So I've got a new program here. And in this one, I'm using these watches, these uh, variable watches. And I want to show you that you can listen to um, multiple things at a time, even of the same variable to the same condition. So I've got here uh, when the program starts, keep looping uh, 
first wait one second just to give us some distance between them then choose a uh, set a random number to the length of this array now in this case I have an array of six things so it's going to randomly pick a number from one to six so it's going to be six five four one two five six all right and then we're going to set the variable that we're watching to the uh, index of that number in the array so if it was two then it'll show dog so this will be set to dog and if it was three it will be set to snake and if it was one it will be set to cat and so it's going to just change that variable uh, you can see right now in my example it's set to parrot because it was six this is something i tested earlier so you can still see where the state was before we turned it off now i also have 12 um, listeners on those on that variable so every single one of these is listening to my watched variable throughout um, now some of them are listening for one or the item in one and some of them are two three so i have two for each one uh, the ones up here are all going to change the color of the button light and the ones down here are all going to just display the number um, so it's going to display one or two or three or four or five um, and then each one of those is calling my black which all it is doing is writing that to display all right so let's just see what happens there and I don't have to touch it in here, there's no button control, so it's just going to automatically every second update. So six, four, three, and you can see that the color of the button is changing too. Three is green, um, four, one, three, and so it's working properly. And so all of those things are listening, but two uh, two listeners are listening to each variable, no, I'm sorry, 12 listening listeners are listening to the same variable, and two of them are listening for the same condition. So you can have multiple conditions. Now, I don't know that much use this has in FLL, um, but this is a good example of what's possible with the when um, property and listening to variables. So if you wanted to um, listen for a condition, you could use a when to uh, to check a variable and make sure, oh, has it gone over 100? If that happens, we want to shut off the motor, uh, something like that. Or maybe you want to shut off the motor um, and play a sound. Um, I'm trying to think of a good FLL application off the top of my head and I can't think of one. All right, so then the next thing I wanted to show you was instead of listening to variables, let's listen to uh, event broadcasters. And so I have here something very similar to what we did in the tutorial where um, just like uh, before we're broadcasting and again, I have multiple listeners. So in this case, I only have eight, but I have um, two that are listening for a message that's everyone turned on. I'm sorry, four that are listening for a message that's everyone turned on. So four different things will react when that happens. Then I have two that are left side only, and then I have two that are right side only. And all this is is really uh, four my blocks. This is the only action in this. Four my blocks that you're gonna turn on a pixel in the top left, the top right, the bottom left, the bottom right. So that's the really the only thing that's um, functional in this, uh, in this little program. So this one pixel will turn on, this one will turn on, this one will turn on, this turn on, depending on what listener is heard. And so you can see over here, I have when program starts, keep looping, when broadcast, everyone turn on. So all these will hear that. Uh, then you're gonna wait three seconds. So whatever happens is gonna happen, but they've got three seconds to do it. Then we're gonna turn off all the pixels because we need to do the next one. We wanna kind of clear the screen, right? So that's why that's doing that. And then we're gonna broadcast, okay, left side turn, left side only. These two will listen, but these ones won't. Okay, uh, a similar wait three seconds and turn other pixels, and they're going to broadcast. Okay, right side only, and these ones will listen, and these ones won't. All right, and again, we're going to turn off that, and we're going to loop, and that's going to keep happening forever. Now, I'm going to show you this happening here to see that it works, but I want you to notice that there's going to be something that's kind of wacky. Um, actually, no, I, we won't go there yet. So, first, let's just display this. I'm going to switch over to the camera. All right, so you can see it four, then the left, then the right, and then all four, and then the left, and then the right. All right, so it is working. I'm gonna come back to the computer. And I, I wanna show you something interesting here. So I'm gonna put something that takes longer in each of these my blocks. I'm gonna just add some weights. I'm gonna put a delay so that these things kinda happen in sequence. Wait one second, wait two seconds, wait three seconds. So this one will happen instantaneously when they're all turned on, but this one will take a second to show up. This one will take two seconds to show up. This one will take three seconds to show up. Um, and I'm gonna hit play, and then I'm gonna switch back to show you what happens. All right, so you can see that it's still working. Oh, 
what just happened there? So the left side, so the right side, ooh, it's all, it's all over the place. So what's happening here is that the calls aren't finishing when the next thing's called, and so uh, lights are being overridden, pixels are being turned off, things aren't happening in the same order, or maybe a, a call that happened three, four seconds ago hasn't happened yet and still it's still waiting for its turn to show its pixel. And so the display has gotten kind of crazy. So coming back to the screen, um, I want to point out that this was with just broadcast a message. But there's another one up here under events, and that is broadcast a message and wait. So the difference is that this one just tells it to do its thing and then it moves on, whereas this one tells us to do its thing and waits for every single uh, when I receive block that heard that to stop before it continues. So this wait here will happen immediately in this case, but down here I've done broadcast and wait, and so this wait would not happen immediately. It would only happen after everything in these um, listeners, including the MyBlock content, has finished. So let's just show the difference here. I'm going to take off the forever loop, uh, and then I'm going to put the other one up here. Let's get this out of our way. So this is the broadcast and wait, and let's show the difference. So now, there's the sequence. It's finished. Wait three seconds. There's the left side the sequence. Wait three seconds. And the right side the sequence. So the broadcast and wait really is waiting. All right. So really interesting thing there. Uh, one thing I want to show you, that, actually two things I want to show you. One I, I learned and one I want to make sure that everybody understands. So if the first thing I, I learned is that I've been going to, I've actually been closing my elements to go back to home. And of course there's a little home icon here, so I didn't even notice, which takes me to home without closing my program. So uh, in my previous tutorial I mentioned that. Um, in the help, if I go down to here, if I go to block descriptions and I go to add blocks, just wanted to show you this uh, code for the win. So, um, just an interesting uh, definition. So, the broadcast and broadcast and wait. We kind of saw what happened here, but the broadcast happens and it plays uh, everything in the stack after it's been sent, but then it continues to the next message. Whereas broadcast and wait, you can see broadcast is broadcast the message and then it. Um, waits to continue until after every block in that stack has finished. And then if we talked a little bit earlier about the when message, uh, this block plays all the blocks attached to it when a certain condition is true. The block will only trigger at the, at the event of it turning true. So it won't re-trigger if the condition remains true. I talked about that a second ago. I just wanted to show you how that is in help. But the other thing I want to talk about was the fact that you can get to help without closing your program, which Apparently, I didn't notice before. All right. So that's all I wanted to show you today. So hopefully that's helpful and interesting. Um, we're really just playing at this point and learning the differences of how things work. Now, uh, the difference between the listening to a variable and listening to an event, uh, practically in the back end, they're probably not that different. Um, the way I, was, I would suggest you think about it is that um, one is um, actively listening and one is not. I actually don't know if that's true in the back end, but that's the way uh, I think about it in this case. Um, so when I said broadcast, it's actually telling something, hey, something's going to happen, but it's telling it to a group and they'll all do it. Uh, whereas the other one is a listener that's actually watching a variable. So when that variable is changed, it's triggered to check and it'll check all of them. Now the only thing I'll be uh, suggesting here is that you be careful with using these because if you did use these in a large amount uh, there's probably a lot of potential here for slowing down the processor because if you have a lot of things listening uh, that's a cycle that's going to happen every um, well let's just assume that there's a giant loop in the program in the back end and then let's say that runs a couple times a millisecond all those listeners are going to have to update every time so um, obviously that could become inefficient if you had a lot of listeners all right so now you have a little bit better idea of how to use broadcast, when to use broadcast and wait, uh, why broadcast might not be working if you are uh, if you have a long uh, time sensitive uh, action inside your listener, inside the stack, 
and also how to listen to a variable. Now, I just want to point out real quick before we finish that I just showed one example of uh, what you can do with this when. Um, any Boolean that you can do, uh, any operation that returns a Boolean value, you could listen for in the when. So there's all kinds of things that you could do. So for example, um, you could listen to any of these, uh, an and, an or, a not, uh, a value is in between, um, and a value contained, a string, you know, a string comparison. So there's a lot that you can do here. And there's many other ones. Left button is pressed is another one that you could uh, do a listener for. Now, there are other ways to do that, but that's just different. The, the uh, brick is shaken. Any of these hexagonal elements can be used in a when. That's pretty interesting. So you could even say when <laughs> when uh, the color light reflection uh, is a certain value, do something. Um, and so very interesting, but very powerful, and a new, new way of, uh, of controlling what we're doing and uh, triggering threats. All right. Uh, as always, if this was helpful for you, please like and subscribe, and we'll continue to make more videos about uh, LEGO Spec Prime intended for an NFL audience.